What's up guys, Mike the Coder here. Today we are going to go over Euler Toiler function. This is another problem on Spaj. Basically that um, you're given the Euler Toiler function is just like uh, the Toiler of a positive integer n is defined to be the number of positive integers less than or equal to n that are co-primed to n. Um, when we say co-prime that just means the values of the GCD of the integers uh, between it and uh, to n is equal to one. That's what co-prime means, like the GCD of the values for it. So how would you do this problem? Uh, basically, it's you just have to loop through it, and uh, I'll just show you the code because uh, if you could try doing it the normal way of loop through, looping through it, like how I did it. So here I just did. Um, actually, let's 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 go back to the first one that I tried. Okay, here, what I try to do is I just loop through from one to n. Okay, so I read a number of test cases, read an n, and then I just have a count equal to zero. And then I just loop through from one to n, and I just see if the GCD of the current value of the number i and the value of n is equal to one, then I just increment count by one. Now this is actually will get you TLE, because I don't know, they're really, they're really strict about the time. So what, we're, what are we going to do? Well, one thing we could do is that we could actually, instead of going from 1 to n, we could loop from 1 to the square root of n. So that's why I tried doing that. And uh, I still, when I tried doing that, I still got TLE. So here I'll show you. We're looping from 1 to the square root of n. Uh, here's a trick you could use. You could do, uh, if I'm looping from i is equal to 1, and i times i is less than, uh, i times i is less than or equal to n, this actually loops through from 1 to the square root of n without having to use the square root function. So this is a little bit faster, but it's still not as fast. So I'll just show you guys what the code is for the actual solution that gets accepted. Okay, so it's the same thing. Outer loop is gonna loop from, uh, actually we're gonna start from two instead of one, but we're gonna start from two and we're gonna loop to the square root of n, right? So this is the outer loop. All right, uh, what, are we, what are we gonna do now? Okay, so we're gonna have this, this uh, result Result is going to store the current value of n. And what we're going to do is that every single time that it's divisible by our, our temporary variable of result is divisible by the current value of i, what we're going to do is keep dividing by it. So we're just going to keep dividing by it over and over again. So in this case, while n mod by i is equal to equal to 0, so while it's divisible by it, we're just going to keep dividing our, um, our n by our i, okay? So we're just gonna keep dividing it over and over again, okay? Then what are we gonna do is that we're going to take the result and then we are going to subtract result minus equal result over i. And why do we do this? Because uh, if we're gonna keep dividing by n divided by equal to i, uh, basically what we're doing is that we are just subtracting the values are already divisible by um, i. So then what that does is it enables us to basically have the end result to be the values that are co-prime, that are basically the GCD is equal to one. So um, there's actually a better explanation here. I'll just show you guys it. Uh, what's the exit? Euler, Toiler function, Euler, Toiler function. Uh, I think it was on, yeah, right here. Euler, Toiler. Euler's tor tolen function. There's one of geeks for geeks. And um, they have a good job explaining this. So if you go on geeks for geeks, here's what they do. Um, uh, this is actually not a good formula. This they're doing here. Anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, this part. Okay. So basically what they're doing is that they're going to... I kind of got this from geeks for geeks, actually. Because like this is a good implementation, but basically what we're gonna do is that if um, if if the current value is divisible by it, we're gonna subtract all multiples from it. So all multiples from one to n and all multiples of p will have a GCD of more than one, right? So like if if um, if if we subtract all the multiples that that uh that have that are multiples of p from one to n. Those are the values that have GCD more than one. So what, what we're going to have is we're going to have the values of n that are going to be only have GCD of one, 
right? Greatest common divisor being one. So if we subtract all the values that are divisible by it, then in the end, we're going to have all the values that are just only divisible, whose uh, GCD is only one. Okay, so like here, um, there's a better way to do it. So basically, uh, we didn't initialize result as n. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check if it's, uh, this, this checks if it's a prime factor, by the way. So if it's a prime factor, then, uh, yeah, if it's, uh, if p is a prime factor, so p is a prime factor, then what we're going to do is we're going to keep dividing the n by the prime factor over and over again. So in, in the end, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract result divided by the prime factor of p. And the reason why we do this is uh, if, if it's yes, then we're going to update n and, and result. So then in the end is that basically our result is going to have all the values of, whose GCD is not 1. Right, if we subtract all the values whose multiples of it. So if a result divided by p is just takes all the values that are multiples of uh, p, that's what it's doing. Okay, so then we subtract by that. And the reason why we do n divided by equal p is that this what this is doing is it's going to uh, keep dividing n by the prime number of p. So remember, p is a prime number, right? Prime factors, and then where if we keep dividing n, then it updates our n. So then that means our our final update of uh, n that we're looping to gets minimized over and over again. So that basically changes the uh, factors of it that we're going through. Because here is we're going through the prime factors, right? So if we keep dividing by p, um, that's going to change the the uh, the uh, the top part of our n. Okay. So then, if n it, it has a prime factor greater than square root of n, then we have to subtract the current value of n from our result because that means that n is also a prime factor and uh, result we need to get rid of the prime factor of the current value uh, yeah we have to get rid of that current value multiple that's also divisible by result and then we just return result so that's basically just the code there's not much to it basically um i'll just reiterate again we're just going to go through every every prime factor here and if it divides by it, we're going to subtract all the multiples from 1 to n. Then what that has is that in the end, we're going to have the GCD of only the values that have value 1. Okay. Then we're going to update n by repeatedly dividing it by p. And that basically just reduces the problem. Okay. So from the current value of n, we're going to reduce that. So then, the, yeah, if the reduced n is more than 1, then move all multiples of n from the result. So that's what we do here down there. But yeah, that's basically basically just a problem. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.